Hello and welcome to Walk the Talk Show with Waylon Lewis. I'm honored to be here today with uh, Mr. Doug Fine and your new book, Hempbound. So, uh, just to start out with a really dumb question, what is Hempbound about? Hempbound is why it matters that the industrial cannabis plant is returning to humanity and um, the fact that after two years of field research, I'm now actually optimistic as a father about our climate future here on the planet. So you're doing this thing that barely exists anymore, which is called journalism. Like you spent two years doing, like, investigating and interviewing people, and it's a fair amount of work, right? I thought you were going to say you're doing a thing that people don't do anymore, which is called optimism. But uh, yeah, maybe right. optimistic journalism too. Like, um, uh, I love doing fieldwork research. It gets yeah. me off the ranch. When I'm when I'm not researching, I'm you know home milking goats on a solar powered ranch in southern New Mexico. So it's that cool. sounds like a fantasy for a lot of women out there. Are you married or um I'm partnered. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry ladies. Um, That's nice of you to say. Yeah. Well at least in the elephant world everyone wants to move to a farm and milk goats. Or at least the idea of it. No one would last more than two days, I'm sure. I consider the idea of refugee insurance where if there's a total collapse, people right. could come and basically be serfs on the ranch. Uh -huh. But when uh I don't want to be like a taskmaster or an overlord. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of benefits to being a feudal kind of, you know, cruel ruler. <laughs> um, so you're wearing a hemp shirt, right? That is right. My girlfriend made this for me, and here's the irony. She okay? made that. She totally made it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, like ordered the snaps. Like, like several Scott colors. Robinson. Hardcore. Yeah, it's like Little House in the Prairie out there for real. Cool. We had a bear come through, kill some of our goats last year. Fun. Yeah. It was uh. Borderline traumatic. No, it was definitely over the board. It was traumatic. Did you wrestle the bear? Um, I yelled at the bear. I threw things at the bear, and I wow. finally um, ex um, expelled the bear by honking on the horn of my ridiculously uh -huh. oversized American truck. Uh -huh. Vegetable oil power. Right. So in your video, which I love, it's like my favorite video ever on YouTube. Um, you are driving around with a friend in an old Mercedes um, <laughs> that's biofueled or whatever by hemp oil. Right? That's right. So what are some of the uses of Oh gosh, so the hardest part for me now, since the, um, I've been back from my research and I'm announcing this to the world with a book, right, um, is not sounding like your roommate with a lava lamp because uh -huh. that's, the, your roommate with the lava lamp was, was right about hemp. So um, just to like give the bullet points, today Canadian farmers um, grow primarily for the hemp seed oil, a nutrient superfood I put in my morning shake. Do you, right. do you drink the teas? I don't, but I'm buddies with Manitoba Harvest folks. Oh, they're nice. They're like a co-op of yeah. uh, farms. That's good. I was up there in Manitoba researching hemp. I met a lot of those people up there, and um, it's incredible what's happening. The industry's growing 24% per year. It's pushing a billion dollars. They can't a keep a billion going. dollars in Canada? Or? Just on hemp seed oil. Yeah, just in Canada. Wow. Yeah, and with no end in sight. Now, this is not like... Now you're talking American. We want some of that. That's why I started with that one. Can you see? Right. So um, issue number two is fiber. Um, there's a lot of uses that can be made of it. I visited a, a factory in uh, the Netherlands where I held this super silky hemp fiber coming out of a machine, and it was going into door panels for Mercedes and BMWs right. today. I saw that right, in your video again. So, so We'll include your video below in our blog. I think it's right there. Yeah. Right, so there's fiber, but then there's other, like, so you know, insulation, like for the Mercedes or for whatever. That's the first killer app for fiber, I think, in the uh, newer, in, in the U.S., uh -huh. is um, you chop down the fiber, you take the seeds out, you know, you have the fiber left over. You don't need to be a real manicurist the way that you do with the high-end textiles or um, Mercedes parts. If you just chunk it up and mix it with lime, it's an insulator that outperforms pink fiberglass nonsense. So, and fiberglass is made out of what? Oh, nasty petrochemical yeah. ick. And also, on-site, concrete, if concrete replaces concrete, and there are load-bearing applications for it, concrete has to be heated to, like, I forgot what it is, something like 3,000 degrees to even work on-site. So it's a huge energy area just to build a house, let alone the ick that is in the concrete. And hemp lime, they call it hempcrete, can work. So, I mean, as a marketing person, wouldn't you just suggest like renaming hemp something else or like super plant and then saying you can make plastic out of it that's stronger than plastic and half the weight, right? That was also in your video. That is right. The, the lid to a tractor or something. Exactly, yep. yeah. Higher auto body parts, yep, totally. So um, the name of it, somebody came up to me the other day and told me that uh, in succession, like the Lakota word for hemp is like I, I hope I'm you know I'm slightly mangling this so apologies to any Lakota folks who are thinking right. this out but um, like it's something like the good green plant or something like that and um, the Chinese character of Ma is a basic um, 
elements in Chinese medicine and uh, hemp is it's used in midwifery to ease labor pain. So it's a it's a real wow. established there. And then just the other day, I was giving a talk at a hemp conference in Northern Colorado. Thank you, Colorado voters, for Amendment 64, which included hemp. Um, and he was down. Let's slow down on that. So Colorado did what about him? Oh my gosh. All right. Well, just real quick to top that loose line, a deaf guy came up to me the other day and said, there's no American Sign Language sign for him, so I've, I've invented it. And so if you want to spread it, I'll spread it right now. All right. It is two H's and then like for the hugging you for I love you. That's the sign for Like this? Yeah. All right. So you're asking renaming him. So there's all possibilities. A like green it. plant or just, I'm really interested in the plant. You know, like right. Do you have any? <laughs> yeah. well, so the what? But no, right. right. So we're all over the place because it's so exciting. But there, <laughs> the one thing it's not good for, right? Which people get confused a lot, is you can't smoke it, right? Right. It's not marijuana. Basically, the definition of hemp is a cannabis plant that has less than 0.1 percent THC. So it can be any of the three main varieties of cannabis, but. Um, the bottom line is like cannabis had a 15 year long industry. They had no issues with mistakes. Uh -huh. Hemp that had too high THC or someone secretly trying to grow psychoactive cannabis. It's, it's not an issue. So you could like burn an entire hemp like field in a farm and you couldn't get high off that smoke. No, you couldn't get high off that smoke. And actually the Canadians have been doing that. They haven't been doing anything with their fiber. So getting back to like what hemp brings us. We already talked about the seed oil profits, fiber applications. And that's just like making money for fiber for farmers who have been uh, not making money on their GMO crops lately mm -hmm. for various reasons, drought, um, super weeds, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, so hemp immediately makes an income for them. But what I'd like to see is this third application in every, uh, I'm just pleading, last night at the University of Colorado, Colorado's been pleading to like young engineers, implement an energy, pro biomass energy processing um, facility in these factories that are going to be pro processing the seed oil and the fiber. And then we become energy independent. This is not a total pipe dream. I know Wayland's like, yeah. No, I just didn't get what you just said. Okay, here it is. <laughs> we can become energy independent from fossil fuels by a hemp. Okay. And it's a, through a machine that's being used in Austria and Germany today and other places. And it's a process called gasification. You throw your farm waste in the hemp stuff that's left when you're done with everything else. Um, and it produces carbon friendly energy in an anaerobic high, high heat process. And, uh, you can totally lean from the grid. We might what kind of energy, it. like electricity or oil? or you, It feeds energy back into the grid the way that it would with your solar panels or your wind panels. So basically, you're a big fan of hemp. I'm getting it. <laughs> you get, yes. Yeah. Are there That's any downsides to hemp? Any concerns? Um, there, there are no real-world practical downsides to hemp. Um, other than it being illegal, generally. <laughs> On the federal level, but just barely. The feds right. re-legalized hemp. Thank you, Jared Polis. Colorado congressman in this farm bill. Oh, and you asked about Colorado. Let's give Jared a little love. That's for Jared. Get right on. Okay, so Colorado. So the feds have legalized university research in Denver, Colorado Agriculture Department. I was there here in Boulder a few weeks ago on the first day that the state agriculture department started taking commercial applications. Um, for cultivating hemp in the state of Colorado. They're not waiting for the best. They're and you had no idea. I mean, when you were writing this book starting two years ago, you had no idea that something that had been ridiculously illegal for how long? 77 years. 77 years since when? 1937. And why was it made illegal ever? Hemp itself was really just a typo. It was it was um, uniquely uh -huh. absurd, ridiculous law banning all types of cannabis, right. which m many people will know actually had to be undone Almost immediately. I was 37, then in 42, oops, we're at war. Navy vessels need 40 tons of hemp rigging per boat. Hemp in the twine and the parachute that saved George Bush Sr.'s life in World War II. Um, wow. Yeah, so we needed it for the war effort. So that you, if you go to whatever you, your search engine is and go to a, uh, uh, a video, you will find it a public, uh, publicly available. Hemp for Victory, 1942, USDA. Wow. Hey, um, please yeah. grow hemp. Grow hemp. People and yeah. Um, yeah, it's it sounded like that propaganda film sounds like your roommate with the. So without hemp, we wouldn't have had the Bush dynasty. <laughs> That's probably true. Yeah. Right. God bless. <laughs> yeah. God, I haven't looked at so it that way. <laughs> and the universe knows what it's doing. Yeah. No, I mean hemp. I mean hemp senior. <laughs> George. George. Senior, I, I did respect, but um, anyway, uh, we'll have him the Kemp burger soon. I think. Uh -huh. I'm almost sure.
I'm very surprised Willie Nelson is endorsing your book. I'm kidding. <laughs> he's like the roommate with the lot of land, basically. <laughs> I'm very thankful. Yeah, no, he's <laughs> awesome. I'm named Waylon after Waylon Jennings, one of his good buddies oh, back in the day. Just listen to this man. Nice. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, where were we? Colorado's forging ahead. Farmers today in the Rocky right. Mountain State. Oh, right. You had no idea that by the time your book came out, which is right now, that it would go from being illegal for 77 years or whatever to suddenly being basically close to legal. A way the, the way I phrase it is, thank you, Congress and the President, for being an uh, unwitting part of the marketing team for my new book, because this is it. Right. It's really it's happening. It's happening. Um, so you're actually thanking Obama for something. <laughs> yes. He never gets thanks for anything. It's awesome. <laughs> and Congress. Hey, I just want to say, Congress. Mitch McConnell, Republican leader of the Senate, pushed it, too, on that side. Good old so, turtle face. We love him. Yeah. That is not an occupier. Right. Him, you know so what I'm wait, why did Mitch support it? Um, you really want to know. Um, supposedly, this was a, some great reporting by uh, a great journalist Ryan Grimm said that the uh, Tea Party dude, the junior senator um, Rand, uh, wanted uh, him Rand. so badly that he yeah. threatened McConnell, saying if you if you'll support him uh, actively. Uh -huh. Like, if that happens, I won't support a Tea Party opponent for you in your next primary. Wow. Hardball. Hardball, yeah, totally. Cool. So, what else? Um, well, I, uh, I'm preaching him gospel around, yeah. around, around And you the obviously world, enjoy yeah. it. I do. I care about him. I think it makes a difference to my family. Like, when, when fully legal hemp cultivation is back on the land, I call it an astonishing no-brainer. Yeah. This hemp that goes into my shirt won't have to be imported from China. Um, I could actually, instead of, I love all the great hemp seed oil companies, but with a little simple press, I could be growing a few acres and feeding my family on a perfect omega soup. I already do, but I won't have to pay like whatever gazillion dollars. Oh, right. It's super healthy, bottle. right? Yeah. The, it's great for vegans and I'm a vegan type. So hemp oil is great for that. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's better for vegans even than other kinds of oil like flax oil because it's higher in certain nutrients that, that are hard for vegans to get. Uh -huh. um, I'm not myself a vegan, but John Rulak, the, the president and founder of Utiva uh, Hemp Seed Oil Company, is, and uh, yeah. told me that story. Oh, and then cool. so other ways that it changes is when the, the seed cake gets left after you press the oil out, that's good goat feed for my goats, because I live to be outsmarted by goats. So it's pretty exciting that it uses, I mean, you were talking about farmers, it uses how much less water and energy. Oh, yeah. Generally. I'm glad you mentioned that. Last year, in the middle of August, I visited the first modern U.S. commercial hemp farmer. His name is Ryan Laughlin. He's here in Colorado. He's an American hero. He's right. a conservative part of the state, basically right. Kansas, you know. Right. And the soil, not his particular farm, but in the region, the soil is starting to look like the Sahara Desert. It's doing right. terrible jobs, dust bowls, and monoculture. And yeah, it looks like desert, just dust. Yeah. So he's trying to he's trying to help that, right? So he goes back in this conservative district and starts planting hemp. And how do you find out about it? How did he find out about it? Yeah. Um, I think he was. I think he would say he probably is friendly to all versions of the cannabis plant. You know, he's a fan. Of uh -huh, I see. Right. That's what he told me. Awesome. I hope I'm not No, no, he said it to me. I was right. I think it's in the book. Um, <laughs> you're, you're basically just saying he likes all forms of hemp. That's all you're saying. Yeah, which yeah. I, I'm saying yeah. of myself too. Yeah. And um, yeah. it's you know Genesis chapter one. You shall have all the plants and seed bearing herbs to use. Oh. Not unless Richard Nixon someday decides. So now we got Bush Senior and the Bible on our side. I think, and Pat Robertson, you know, he's big time on the new one. Uh-huh, and Mitch. Of course. Awesome. Can't lose. Oh, so you were saying about the yeah. water. So Ryan Laughlin, risking federal raid last year, because it was before Colorado said go for it, grew 50 acres here in Colorado, um, in part sponsored by Dr. Bronner's, a sort of, you know, super cool, righteous, yeah. and, and, and all oil company. And so, so dilute. Dilute. <laughs> dilute. Yeah. <laughs> Although you need to less number to get that attempt to it, honestly. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a better... Uh, the packaging um, always yells, dilute. And, uh, oh, yeah. Caps. Yeah, with all the prayers. Yeah, yeah. So Ryan said he's finding... Uh, it took last year for his inaugural to crop half, half the water that we took on that same wow. half. That's amazing. Big deal in a drop. Um, so is there anything I haven't touched on? I mean, I'm in love. <laughs> um, so we have one audience question here from Laura Cutney. Um so impressed. I'm wondering if hemp can be extruded in 3D printers to make uh, some articles or something for the medical field, such as prosthetic devices or bone implants like other petroleum-based plastics can be. That would be cool. <laughs> so 
let's call this the fun things that Hep yeah. can do part of the segment. Um, yeah. yeah, so totally not. Um, another. Uh, so yes. Yes, does. absolutely. Because it's so strong. Yeah, anything that plastics can do, hemp can do. Wow. And plastic is horrible. It's all over the oceans. It never goes away. It's made out of plastic. It's usually toxic because it's full of chemicals. I'm it's telling horrible. you, I'm telling you folks, like, this is it. So hemp could replace plastics. Yeah, basically. Could it make, like, uh, drink bottles and stuff? Like totally. Kind of? But, yeah, and also industrial manufacturing, like, composites. So I went to this place. And there's, there's a chapter in found about this. Um, called the Composites Innovation Center. Instead of raiding their hemp farmers, the Canadians, um, you know, do research into hemp apps. And um, uh, so it was amazing. It was like a James Bond factory. There were all these different research into what you can do with the local hemp fiber because, you know, as we talked about earlier, they're just selling seed, basically. So they want to know what to do with fiber, right? And um, I found out from their smart researchers there that, like, 30% of world carbon emissions go into things like um, the press board and plywood, they call them composites, the right. petroplastics that are that are most truck and vehicle bodies today. So they're finding that hemp fibers are, as your roommate with the lava lamp said, cheaper and more effective, like they perform better than petroplastics. Cheaper, stronger, lighter. It's like a Daft Punk song. Um, no downsides, really. Less water. It's happening, yeah. And, oh, and, and they probably biodegrade or you know, eventually. <laughs> yeah, not while you're driving your tractor. They had this right. one tractor hood that was there, and I was, like, trying to be the good journalist. I was, like, you know, elbowing right. it and kicking it. It's super strong. Right. It's it, um, Yeah, so what are some of the other cool apps? Uh, Body Armor um, is another future app. You can make better drones with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Right. That was faster, stronger tanks. Um, so how is it better than uh, cotton, or is it? Cotton uses 30% of the world's pesticides. This is why... China is way ahead in uh, <laughs> in uh, textiles. I love telling this part of the story because um, there's this episode of Seinfeld that I love where George is talking about for the first time having the upper hand in his relationship, and he loses his upper hand, of course, and when he complains about it to the girl she breaks up to him, she says, he goes, I had hand, and she said, yeah, you're going to need it. Um, so um, hand in textiles is the softness of it, right? And so in order to be in your big mall stores, you have to have super soft hands. If you're buying a cotton t-shirt in, in a store in a mall, it, you, you touch it and you like you want to just like rub it around yourself and lay it. That's good hand, right? So um, uh, good hemp, feel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Soft. So hemp, China is abandoning cotton because it's poisoning their countryside. So much pesticides. So expensive to produce. It's, just, it's, it's gone beyond the sort of cost-benefit threshold. Wow. So they're switching that big time. Their president, president of China, is view, is going to tour hemp factories. Could you imagine that? Wow. President Obama today is in a hemp factory in Illinois, which puts right. twelve thousand people back to work. Right. That's coming. So yeah, I mean that's a nice visualization. So where do you see hemp um, being in like five years or three years? That's a good question. In five? Thank you. I think we'll be uh, predictions are free. Right. So I think you can't be wrong. <laughs> So by that time, yeah. <laughs> Although that's just now the legendary elephant kind of hemp discussion, so people right. are going to be coming back to this for ages. Right. So you've you got everything right for that prediction. Yeah. yeah, maybe I should show caution for the first time in my life. You'll have to send out a re revised edition in like <laughs> two years. Um, oh, if, sorry for the plug, but if I can just say, folks, yeah. check out DougFind.com. There's a, a events click probably while you're watching this happening all over the nation. What's so, happening? Um, live event slideshows and talks about all these apps, the hemp limo ride oh, I took, right. um, the, you know, various adventures and misadventures of hemp bound slideshows at events. Around Is it printed world. on hemp? You can make hemp paper, right? That was actually a big, big issue. When when I initially was, like, talking about this with Chelsea Green, the publisher, let's do a hemp book, and obviously the title, Hemp Bound, get it? Bound, right. get hemp? No, I get it. I, I thought it was happening. And they tried seriously. This is what they're about. They're about making these things happen. Right. And um, it is printed on 100% recycled paper for the first edition. Right. But um, they looked at it on. They wanted this message to reach a mass audience, especially once they reached the time is right. And they could not find it in like if it was going to be the book was going to be a success and sell a lot of copies. They could not find hemp um, paper, even 20% hemp paper, in any reasonable amount of time. So I did the. Uh, I have this like sort of. Artist tantrum emails and I was like, what? That's called hemp out kind of stuff. No, really yeah. polite and professional. I just right. left on it. You know what right. I mean? Of course, that's email. Right. Um, and, um, and there was a lot of like, 
I love working with you guys, which is true. Yeah. Um, but uh, so a lot of passive aggressive. Like you guys are great. <laughs> Fuck. No, Stu Griffin calls it the good sandwich. I started off with like, this has been so amazing. Can you believe this is happening? And then I ended it with like, I'm less mad than I would have been because everyone from publicity to editorial is awesome. So this is how this is how you bitch. Um, it works really well in relationships too. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you had an affair on me because I love you so much. You know, <laughs> I'm leaving you and taking all of your money, but it's you know the right thing to do. Sorry, I'll you never forget our good time. I never forget our good times. Maybe at the end. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I was talking to a girl, but yeah, we can break <laughs> out. <laughs> so um, okay, so uh, Chelsea Green. So they're trying. They could do it on the first edition, and um, if. If uh, it's in store, the universe intends. I know, like, there's been like Buddhist masters in this chair prior to me, for you, and so I'm feeling rabbis, congressmen. If the U.S. Wow, even congressmen. So oh, that yeah. is really so. Um, the uh, the the universe wants Hempbound to be read by a lot of people. Um, then Chelsea Green is going to go whether right. through crowdfunding or something and print a hemp edition. And it'll get cheaper. I mean, hemp will be more available. So I like that. So if everyone buys this 100% recycled book. And reads it, and becomes an activist around it, and hemp continues to get more legal, and then you sell tons of copies, and you drive around your hemp limo, you know, with all your hemp cash, because cash used to be hemp, right? Or maybe the Declaration of Independence. Both something. of those things. Uh -huh. Declaration of Independence draft was on hemp, and Virginia colonists could pay their taxes in hemp. Oh, this no, is no, no joke. This and is the first hemp. flag or something. Yeah, Betsy Ross's flag. Yeah, what else like that? It's so all American, it's crazy. The Japanese emperor uh, attends his coronation, draped in hemp. Wow. Two weeks ago, I was, I think, the first person in modern history to testify before the UN in drug war, to end the drug war. Um, they were having the high session of the UN and Vienna. And, um, this organization brought me to like, give a little speech. Um, I was dressed head to toe in hemp. Uh -huh. So, United Nations. Do you wear a hemp every day? Um, to be honest, okay, well, this may be TMI. Back home in New Mexico, I'm not even often wearing clothes. <laughs> yeah, you know I live super remote, and like you figure, 41 acres in the middle of nowhere, that you could walk out to the clothesline to get your clean boxers off the line. But invariably, that's when Mary, the UPS woman, is like, driving down the hill. Like, <laughs> Poor Mary, she's used to it. Um, yeah, well, you have a beard. I mean, bearded men can walk out naked. I get a lot of Bigfoot man. reports. Like, no, it was just me. Yeah, right. That's awesome. Um, so, what have we not covered? Anything? Um, We've covered the whole book, and I need to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> and here I was thinking, I owe you a commission for your... It's a fun yeah. read. It's a fun read. Um, so what else? Oh, you, to really answer your question about predictions, hemp in five years. How about that? Hemp in five years, I think um, we're going to see it be a multi-billion dollar industry already in the U.S. Not in five years, but I believe eventually hemp, the industrial side of the cannabis plant, will out-earn, will be bigger for the U.S. economy than psychoactive economy. Cannabis. And my argument is, Coors is big, but Exxon Mobil is bigger. And if this energy right. program, that kind of blueprint out in Hemp Found, comes to fruition, I think we'll see Hemp be bigger than than uh, psychoactive cannabis. I was at Bioneers recently, and Avery Levins was talking about like carbon fiber and making cars way really lighter, and that's a great way to save fuel. But hemp could actually help do that. I mean, car manufacturers, Ford or whatever, could be using hemp. It is. It's 30. So the, the stuff they were researching in Canada, the mixture they were researching, it's a prototype. It's really going into a tractor. Yeah. And I offered my. That's awesome. I offered that like for a small commission. I don't know if you take me up on it, but my uh, online handle of Organic Cowboy is the model name. Like okay. in the John Deere store, the Organic Cowboy. Right. That would be sweet because it's made from hemp. And, oh, I like it. Um. So. Anyway, so all right, super strong, super strong fiber. I love it. Like, well, thank you so much. Thanks for your passion, making it fun, and um, I want to read it now. And I love Chelsea Green. I uh, respect them as a writer for many years. They're one of the few eco publishers out there. So I, I realize I'm late to this ball game, but I'm like a super fan now. Thank you for yeah. having me well, on. They're in Vermont, so let's not. Oh, you're a super fan of Elephant. Oh, yeah. That's oh, let's great. talk about that more. Yeah, <laughs> Elephant. I, I am uh, embarrassed to not already have been on board with this. This is a it's amazing. We it's our job to reach you guys. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We, well, we haven't. It's just been me for years, and then we started just making tons of cash money. Unfortunately, <laughs> cash is not in him. And uh, <laughs> now we're hiring amazing staff and doing these videos. Very professional. And, um, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's very fun. professional. We're here in my living room. I have not. I have safe to say, on this or any other book tour, I've been handed a 
<laughs> a blanket. Let alone yeah. slippers. Yep, that's true. Yeah, yes. check it out. <laughs> Marry the UPS woman. I'll be impressed. Can I say Rachel, um, just here on the team, pulled off the slippers from her own feet to let me wear them <laughs> and stay warm during this interview here in the spring in Boulder. That is <laughs> love. All right, Doug Fine, thank you so much. It's an honor. YouTube.com slash Waylon H. Lewis. Oh.